At long last, we're over to the other path to learn about system management mode. So at the very beginning of class, we talked about real mode and the reset vector. So check on that. And now we can finally learn about system management mode, which is set up by firmware. So if real mode and the BIOS starts out at the very beginning of the reset, setting a whole bunch of stuff up, it has to you know, do a bunch of configuration of the hardware. One of the things that it configures is system management mode code what's going to run in this special mode. So what is SMM? Well, for now, it's the most privileged execution mode on an x86 processor. And I say for now because Intel is actively trying to add hardware mechanisms to make it deprivilegeable. So basically a BIOS could set up SMM so that it wasn't so privileged, so that it can't immediately and guarantee compromise of a virtualization system or hypervisor. But, uh, but that's all in the newest hardware. So most people don't have that yet. And even if people had it, other BIOS vendors and operating system makers have to come to agreements about how it will be used in order to deprivilege de SMM. So for now, SMM is the most privileged execution mode. And why do we say that? Well, because it is able to read and write from everyone else's RAM, but no one's allowed to read and write from its RAM. So it can go ahead and scribble all over a kernel and inject code that, you know, steals your keystrokes or something like that. It can scribble all over a hypervisor and break the isolation between different virtual machines. So obviously, you know, if someone escalated from within a VM to SMM on some cloud infrastructure, that's going to be a bad time because then they can, you know, go get access to all the other data and all the other VMs of the cloud provider on that particular system. And also, as we saw obliquely in the flash protection section, I didn't want to cover it, you know, in too much detail. We'll cover that now here. But basically, SMM is responsible for dealing with rewriting the BIOS write enable to zero if someone sets it and, you know, the particular system doesn't want to allow writing to the flash. SMM is interesting because it basically executes in the background without the need for involvement by something like an operating system. A system management interrupt happens, it transitions to this mode, runs some code, and then hands back to the operating system, which may be none the wiser. When it enters into SMM, all the processors are placed into system management mode. So basically, everything on the system stops, it goes off and runs the code, and then everything on the system resumes. So one of the first things that typically happens upon entry to SMM is that the code is going to set up a typical 32 or 64 bit paging, making it much more like protected mode instead of real mode. Now, SMM is only entered through system management interrupts and it's only exited through a special resume instruction, RSM. That resume instruction may only be executed from within a processor that is in SMM. Any other place it's going to cause a fault. So returning back to this diagram, we did actually see all of these SMIs and resumes. There's some SMIs and resumes, SMI, resume. Here we go, should have just made this auto animate. Keep going, whole bunch of SMIs and resumes. And so, you know, what are those? They're basically saying SMI is the way out of long mode and then it magically transitions over to here, teleporting over into SMM mode. And the resume assembly instruction gets you out of SMM mode and back to whatever mode you just came from. And likewise, on the actual Intel documentation of the different finite states of the CPU, there are all these SMIs and resumes. Now, you may have noticed that those SMI ended with a hash symbol. And so from the documentation, it says that the hash symbol at the end of the signal name indicates that the active or asserted state occurs when the signal is at a low voltage level. When, SMI, when the hash is not present, the signal is asserted at a high voltage level. So uh, in electrical engineering, they'll oftentimes put a little sort of bar above a signal to indicate that it's active low instead of active high. And uh, basically, I think just to make it easier for typing, Intel has just went with a hash at the end of the thing to indicate that SMI is an active low signal. So basically, if there were a physical wire running to the processor, that wire should be pulled down to a low voltage rather than up to a high voltage in order to say it's SMI time. The overall point of system management mode, as the name implies, is for management of the system. Now that can be management of things like power, that could be management of things like security on earlier systems, but it's really for just sort of any code that the OEM wants to run in an isolated environment that can be independent of the operating system. So that code's gonna be running whether you're running Linux or Windows, so that code needs to not have any particular operating system dependencies because the code should really be more about the hardware, the particulars of the hardware and the power management thereof, 
or the particulars of the OEM special secret sauce that they want to hide there uh, rather than being anything specific to an operating system. But although a OEM may place some special sauce there, and although we can't directly inspect system management mode from an operating system, so we can't just dump the contents and reverse engineer it and see you know, what the vendor put in there and what particular vulnerabilities it may have, uh, the system management mode code is set up by the BIOS. So it is incumbent upon the BIOS to write some, content, some code into some particular memory region, lock down that memory region, and then that code will be available whenever the system management interrupt fires. So that means at the end of the day, it is ultimately possible to find this SMI handler code by digging around in the BIOS spy flash image. That also means that protecting SMM is a matter of both protecting the SMRAM code, the SMM code at runtime, and also protecting the spy flash because an attacker can either runtime break into system management mode through whatever attack surfaces it exposes, or they could break into it via infecting the BIOS flash chip and just getting loaded up by the BIOS at boot time. And of course, you do indeed want to protect the SMM at runtime because you don't want, you know, an attacker in one VM bouncing their way up to SMM and bouncing their way over and down to some other VM. And so then there's the interesting property that, you know, infecting the BIOS definitely implies that you will be able to infect SMM. Infecting SMM does not necessarily mean that you'll be able to infect the BIOS, but sometimes it does, right? If it's not using protected range registers, then SMM is sort of the only other protection mechanism in play. Those optional material like the flash master regions and stuff like that, well, we said the BIOS is always able to access the BIOS region, just that's how the hardware works, regardless of whatever privilege bits get set. So that's part of why that was optional material is because, you know, that doesn't really come into play when it comes to protection on the x86 from the x86, from an attacker trying to privilege escalate. That's more about protection from the other devices like the gigabit ethernet or the management engine. So as mentioned before, SMM is only entered through system management interrupts, and that can be caused by the invocation of the SMI pin or the advanced programmable interrupt controller. Now, in reality, these days, there is no SMI. So uh, Intel, you know, of course, you know, they want to reduce the number of pins, otherwise they keep growing forever. And so they have this notion of virtual legacy wires, which are basically just a message that's communicated between PCH and the CPU over the DMI interface. And that basically says, yeah, hey, you know, by the way, you should uh, start system management mode. Here's an SMI for you. And so there's not actually a physical wire necessarily anymore. Now, system management interrupts need to be considered their own completely different type of interrupts. They can't be masked with the interrupt flag or with the uh, you know, clear interrupt flag assembly instruction. They don't have anything to do with the interrupt descriptor table that was discussed in Architecture 2001. Things like non-maskable interrupts, they actually sort of lose the race when it comes to if a SMI and a non-maskable interrupt occur at the exact same time, the SMI gets precedence. So the SMI really is sort of the most powerful interrupt, and if it happens, the system's going to go run some system management interrupt code. So, you know, abstractly, SMIs happen, but what are some of the causes of SMIs? Well, here's some of the causes of SMIs. It's a whole bunch of them, and I'm going to now highlight a few of them that are security relevant in the coming videos.